based off where they put the the slot, right? Based off of um, where they put it is how much more money they're going to pay. And so, you know, uh, in the beginning, of course, when it has everybody's attention, you might have some pay almost like five, six, maybe up to $10 million for Tomsa because they're, they're believing that they're going to, excuse me, recoup that based off of sales. So you might have uh, some, some, well, the, some of the older people, they remember they used to have the Budweiser frogs. And back in the day, they had the pit bull called, called uh, Spuds McKenzie um, or, or anything that's associated with you know, different messages. And so, you know, we titled this before Satanic and Demonic Subliminal Messages. So I'm sharing my screen here. And, you know, just in recapping, let me go to the next. Um, and so I recapped this yesterday. Uh, I mean, um, last week we were talking about with uh, different sexual things, um, the sixes, and we know six is supposed to be the numeric number, the biblical numeric number of man. Um, and so when you think of man, the the, the number um, that people don't understand the hidden message behind it, man is and six. Right? Right. Somebody has Somebody to has phone. Phone. It's getting feedback. Um, man is self. And so when man is self, the number 666, we know is a representation of the enemy. So you looked at Vodafone, you looked at Disney, you looked at um, uh, the Google Chrome thing, right? And so um, with that, it was the hidden number sixes. And um, even in Walt Disney, um, we, do we dove into what the numbers and, and the letters meant in, 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 um, for Munster and what it was a representation of. Um, the sexual uh, connotation behind the berry explosion and stuff like that. And, you know, like First Lady said before, right? Um, you know, some people be like, oh, y'all reaching, y'all reaching. And I, and I said to you, I want you guys to really think about it because we often use words like, you know, oh, I'm trying to promote my brand, my brand, my brand. Let me explain something to you. When you're a million or billion dollar company, you have PR people, right? Your personal relation people, they look into stuff to see, how can they market something? And before you sit there and create a lot of this stuff, they're supposed to be to re do the research. They're supposed to understand what it was meaning and why it meant this. Um, the original, the original Timberland tree, right back in the day, they wanted to change it over over time because it was known as the quote unquote hanging tree, right? And so they wanted to changing it because. When you have your people that are sensitive and have their ears to and, and to the to the streets and understand what's going on, you're doing money and it's an investment. So it's not just by accident or you know coincidence. Again, what is the, the what it was the greatest trick the devil performed was to make the world think he didn't exist. So these things that you think are just by accident and they're not. Um, let's go next one. Let me, go, let me go before you go forward a little bit go ahead. Um, just to add to what you were saying uh, like the pr people they targeted through subliminal messages and i i don't know if we mentioned this about i don't know if cool cigarettes was directed for black people they used to have penguins on it but then they took that off but they made it seem cool to smoke it uh, Virginia Slims were for the um, subliminal message that for Virginia Slims was directed to the women's rights. Uh, these are just some of the simplest things that, you know, we're not really paying attention to, but they directed it towards certain parts or certain people to get them to buy their product. And, you know, I don't really have to get into it, but they were very successful in it because a very small thing like that get your attention and you would go buy it and next thing you know you're you're hooked and but you think that you were part of the how how can i say this uh the in crowd or we're part of the association of a bigger crowd 
So uh, that was just two of the things I wanted to bring up. And that was just cigarettes. And you brought up the tree, bro. That is true on, on Timberland Boots. And, and one more thing I'll say. Um, what's that drink we, uh, that they come, came out with and the KKK was behind it? Snapple. They that's used to have, uh, yeah, Snapple. That's why I stopped. The, the uh, Cruz Clubs clans were the ones that were behind that. And they had a small tree on their, um, yes. <laughs> they had a small tree on the Snapple bottle when they first came out. And then once they got a backlash off of it, they stopped. But I, I don't I don't buy Snapple at all. Okay, thank you for the time. We all we all uh pouring into each other. Um so if you look at here too, recapping, um the Dodgers awarded them uh, a community award, right? And um, I spoke to you about this um, because they wanted, one of the pitchers was like, hey, listen, it goes against my, um, you know, um, goes against my beliefs because those of you that were on last week, you saw me um, post a video where this group was basically, um, uh, it was called, they're called the Sisters of uh, Perpetual, um, let me bring my notes, um, Perpetual Indulgence, right? And so they basically were this group, and you see some of the symbolic, them playing a, a cross, uh, upside down cross with the guitar, and they dressing as nuns, and these are men dressing as nuns, and um, you saw the mocked crucifixion, but yet, they were awarded this community hero. Let's listen to the word hero award for the countless hours of community service <laughs> and ministry outreach to those on the edges in addition to promoting human rights and respect for diversity. So people's agendas have become more important than what the spiritual enlightenment is. I'm gonna go on to the next one. Um, so searching for some of these images, mind you, um, my mentor is one of the people that this is what he does for a living. And so he poured some stuff into me. And I'm going to be honest with you, one of the things that he shared gets so deep that I really what I don't have time to share it on here because it's one image. It's one image, but the image is so, so, so deep that it will probably take almost close to 30 to 40 minutes to break it down. Um, you know, and so uh sister first lady um and i talked about it and i might bring him on here one day i just got to make sure that we control his mouth but um he he basically was breaking some stuff down and you know things he gave me and, and as you see i put here the devil hides in plain sight right why because searching for these examples it's not easy it's not you got to know what to look for and exactly specifically what to look for keywords um, if you, anybody is familiar with the dark web, there's key things that you have to type in, in order to get access to that. Um, you know, a simple Google search will only give you what a small amount of information in order to dive deep. You have to already have an understanding of what you're trying to dig up because these things do hide in plain sight. Next. All right. So now on to part two. All right. So back masking. Um, so back masking, we talked about this last week as a recording technique in which a message is recorded backwards onto a track that is meant to be played forward. And again, knowing what to look for. It's a deliberate process where a message is found through phonetic reversal may be unintentional, right? But while back masking entered its experimental phase in the 1950s, the technique was popularized on a Beatles 1966 album Revolver, which included backward instrumentation. In a digital age, the ability to play audio tracks backward has become difficult without the use of specific equipment or software or interest in discovering hidden messages and song that um, has declined. And the reason why is because any of us that had records where you had to put the needle on the records, you take the record and you start playing it backwards like this. And as you play it backwards, you hear going, and it used to talk and it used to say some stuff. 
So what we should be aware of what kinds of music we allow to occupy what? Not just our minds, but our space and our time. The Bible teaches that whatever the mind dwells upon will sooner or later come into a person's words and actions. We say, speak those things, though they were so, right? But if you go up to, to Philippians uh, Philippians 4, right? Um, and 4 and 8, Colossians 3 and 2, and 2 Corinthians. It says, uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, excuse me. It says that we should take captive of every thought and make it obedient, not to ourself. Make it obedient to who? To Christ. Make it obedient to Christ. More important than finding out if a song has backmasking is considering the lyrics of the song and how the music affects us personally. If anything leads us down a path that does not glorify God, then that thing should be avoided and also absolved from our lives. So here's what's so funny, and I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm a, as a as a you know former musician, music is everything to me, right? And so this is a song when, go ahead, uh, Jirene or uh, Joshua. How you doing, Terry? I just had a quick question. Go ahead. It was uh, so even even like certain beats can kind of be like that too. Is that true? Because like I heard that you know even like uh, the way people play uh, the drums or play any certain beats in a certain manner like mannerism is considered like unholy. Is that true or no? So so there is truth in that, but 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 let me be very clear. Um, so ignorance is bliss. So there's certain things that we do and we don't understand or why we mimic it or why we do it right and so in certain cultures i had somebody say this to me before um and and you you and i talked about this you know um noah and i talked about this with certain cultures there's certain things the ignorance that's automatically associated with it um every haitian does not practice voodoo that's a myth right but there's certain things that have been introduced from to to not just our people but other other cultures too right that we wind up taking on these things and they become quote unquote life and different ceremonial things, things that are ceremonious, right? There was, you know, the playing of drums or the playing of instruments. Um, I said this to, to y'all last week, uh, they were doing an interview with Ty Tribbett and he was talking about back in the day that a lot of the mothers would not let you get on instruments or even the shepherds of the house would not let you get on instruments or be in a leadership position because they never knew what spirits you were conjuring up right they never knew what things that you were conjuring up so they had to be very careful so you know you hit a beat of something so you know again you being in the organization that you're in you know somebody the, the again sacrilegious you know the original song was um uh, right, but that was actually taken from a, a a church song. That was that was a church song back in the day. You know, somebody trying to sneak in my frat, and they ain't gonna be. That's sacrilegious, right? That that that's that's not what that song was intended to. So the thing is, sometimes we take beats, we take lyrics, we take songs, and you had to sit this. You know, yes, Pastor. You had to you had to sit for a while before they had to check out what you were doing before you sat there and was just going to be, as they say, conjuring up anything because they needed to make sure what you were bringing forth was something that was quote unquote holy, right? Try the spirit by the spirit. Um, but we use this song right here, uh, and I'm sure a lot of you have heard the song "Hotel California." Um, you know, it was so many messages and so many things because I did my research on this a while ago, even before this, right? But what it says is Eagles Hotel California. It's not only on Halloween that you can expect the devil to be up to no good in the background. For example, with the super hit Hotel California by the Eagles, when played in reverse, the secret message says, Satan, he hears this. He had me believe. So now when the Eagles actually were asked about that, they were saying because the song was actually supposed to be written about people that come to California and get lost. They get caught up in Hotel California was L.A. And they were saying that people were actually lost up. Uh, you know, you, everybody wants to go chase stardom and they go there and they get lost. So they were saying that Hotel California and they talk about how the devil was, uh, you know, 
introducing certain things to people. And so with this part right here, and it says when it was played in reverse, Satan hears this. And so what they said in their interview was that he had me believe that I actually drank the Kool-Aid. And if any of you know what that phrase means, when you say drink the Kool-Aid, it comes from Jim Jones. If you don't know who Jim Jones is, look him up because he was actually a quote unquote cult leader who had people drink the Kool-Aid. He believed that he was quote unquote one of the messiahs and that he was going to help lead them to the promised land. And when the government was moving in on him, he decided to say, you know what? We all gonna die together. And so people drank the Kool-Aid and they wound up dying. Next. Led Zeppelin, I know a lot of y'all don't listen to this, obviously, but uh, Stairway to Heaven, the cult rockers Led Zeppelin have long been said to have sold their souls to the devil. Um, we often, as Black people say, it's these rock groups, but it's not even just the rock groups, it's pe people in general. But when played backwards, the words sound like this, oh, here's to my sweet Satan, the one whose little path would make me sad, whose power is Satan, he will give those with him 666. There was a little tool shed where he made us suffer, sad Satan. There are various interpretations of this passage. And to be honest, you have to listen very carefully to be able to make out the words. But ain't nobody sitting there trying to sit and listen to that because I'm not pouring that into my soul. But that's what it was. <clears throat> and so we're going to tap into the now because people are always like, oh, that was before. No, it's not. It's, it's honestly more prevalent now than it was before, because the Bible says, not me, not pastor, not first lady, not anybody else who's in leadership possession, the Bible says, in these last and evil days, these are things that are going to happen, right? You tap into revelations. It talks about the things that are going to happen. So sometimes as Christians, when we're like, oh, I can't believe it, I'm like, why not? It is sad, it is sad, but this is what the word said is going to come to pass. So we shouldn't be surprised, but this is where we put on the what? Whole arm of God so that we are prepared to be able to know how to save our soul and help lead other people to salvation. So artists who pay openly homage to Satan. So y'all know little Uzi Vert and people all the time like say fast. And again, once again, here we go with the, oh, y'all just making, really? Really, because see, let me tell you something. If somebody told me that they saying stuff super fast and it sounds like Lucifer, right? I'm gonna change my name, even if it was a mistake. What's not a mistake is when you do stuff in your concert, you have upside down crosses. You doing stuff like this with the eyes and you paying, you know, all this type of looking what quote unquote demonic. Again, we have PR people, right? But people eat it up. People eat it up. And you wind up saying this stuff and you wind up talking about all this stuff and being a part of it. And this is stuff that you pour into your soul. And if we're gonna really be transparent and honest with ourselves, we spend more time out in the world. And this is why I said, we always gotta pray over our kids, watch over our kids, because where do our kids spend the most time? At school. At school, you have them being poured into with a lot of stuff. They come home, depending on what type of job we have, right? We don't get a lot of time with our kids. So they might have to go to a babysitter. Somebody else might have to watch them. And then they sit in front of TV watching certain things. And then boom, I, my kids couldn't watch certain things on TV. They couldn't, they couldn't because, and, 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 and my daughter's on here now. And we talked about it since she's been older. And she's like, oh, as I've gotten older, I've seen certain things. And I understand why there were certain things that you didn't want us to watch. We thought you were overreacting. But no, and this is when I definitely wasn't in the church. It was just like, you know, the Lord had blessed me enough to give me wisdom to say, you know what? Nah, your kids probably shouldn't be watching that because they sit for hours and hours in those subliminal subliminal messages, like uh, Angelica said and, and, and um, Sister Haynes said and Isaiah, those little messages that are influencing people, right? Without them even being aware of it and certain things that are said and you got yourself repeating certain lyrics and don't even realize what you're calling out to or calling on to. So some of you know uh, the singer, Sam Smith. Um, Sam Smith, when he first came out, um, you know, was a R&B singer. Um, and, you know, I listen, I used to love a lot of songs from Sam Smith. And Sam Smith was like, when he wrote that first album, it was for 
um, his 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 lover that that left him, and you know this, that, and the other. And as I've always said, and I think we continue, it's like you judge nobody, right? But because sin is sin in the eyes of the beholder. So whether he chooses his the lifestyle uh, as far as who he chooses to be with or not, that's between him and God. But th right here. My thing is, these are certain things, again, when you open your soul up to certain things that's demonic, like we wear costumes like this, right? And we think it's cute and it's cool. Like, who are you showing that you were paying homage to? You understand what I'm saying? That's nothing cute about that. You're an R&B singer. Why are you walking around with some demonic stuff? So I know this is a fan favorite of all of y'all. All of y'all, you know, Summer Walker. Um, so why did I put this up here? So I knew I knew it yesterday. I'm going to tell you why it's important. Look very closely at the pictures that I have, especially the first one um, and even the second one, right? Um, when there's certain things that are representation, quote unquote, um, you know, Christians wear crosses, right? You look at the half moon in the first one, um, the Cats in the Egyptian culture have always been linked to, you know, certain things, but this is her ritual with the half stones and stuff like that. And I, um, some of you, you know, that have been on here with me and um, from, from when we were talking about, um, we were talking about, uh, he came to set the captives free. I was talking to you about Wiccan religion, right? And so in a Wiccan religion, they pay homage to things, the earth. What does the word say? Anything that is getting your praise but God, and I'm paraphrasing, anything that is getting your praise but God is not of God. Nothing should be your little G-O-D. But no. Nah. So so yeah, yeah, daughter, it's definitely, it's definitely off. And so these are the things, men, right? And even some women, these are some of the people who we're linking up with. Because it's not just women that practice this type of stuff, it's men too. And this is who we're laying down with and, and already doing the things that we shouldn't do, being intimate, you know, before marriage and stuff like that. And what does the world talk about? When you lay with someone, they become part of your soul. Y'all are soul tied. And so you're soul tied to somebody who's worshiping, right? Because that ain't God. That ain't God. And we sit there and we buy into this, oh, my chi and, you know, my yin and my yang. And where does the word say anything about that stuff? This is all man's made. Oh, yum, yum. Like, bro. And so we don't realize what we do. And I said to some, some uh, I had a conversation with someone. Someone was like, oh, well, it's part of my culture. But if your culture is doing things that go against the word of God, then you need to be mindful of where, of what you're practicing in your quote unquote culture. All right. So y'all know about this and I, I don't know if y'all, I, I couldn't find the one that he had when it was like, his hands was like this and it was a skeleton when he was doing a tour, right? And he was sitting down like this. So Kanye West, who originally, originally was Kanye West, and I'm not going to lie, back then, boy, and my daughter on here, I had the one with no curses. We was pumping college dropout hard, boy. We was going up and down the roads. And he said, Daddy, can you put that on again? And so these are things she and I talked about because here's stuff that I was playing for my daughter, right? And, and with well, both of my daughters, and, you know, um, yes, Sister DeLois, she was talking about she needed the protection from the evil eye. Um, the only thing, Pastor, let me get to you one second. Only thing that really can protect us is who? God. But so with this, right, this is what I was selling to my daughter. I was selling Kanye. And so now he reinvents himself and is Jesus and this, that, and the other. Now we know what that was supposed to be, you know, part of and he talked about some of the things of why he called himself Jesus because just like Jesus because he's Yeezy Khan Yeezy you know what I'm saying and he shortened it and called himself Jesus and because just like Jesus he was persecuted and well first of all aside the fact that that's narcissism right for us to even open up our mouths and compare ourselves to Jesus what he went through and say that 
Bro, that's sacrilegious to say that he, we were persecuted like he was persecuted. Let me explain something to you. You were talking about a man that was a man, right? But then you're talking about Jesus, where you're talking about a man that was a spiritual man as well and died for our sins and was persecuted for us being an ungrateful nation, for us being people who didn't even ex ex uh, to, to even accept him, but yet and still, they still decided to die for our sins. And so therefore, we have to realize who we are giving quote unquote glory to. And we can keep trying to say, oh, wrongly persecuted at that. Thank you. Thank you, Talia. Exactly. Um, Sister Talia, wrongly persecuted at that. And so we can keep trying to sit there and say all we want to. Oh, y'all just, but see, that's the, that's the problem. We sleep. We sleep. And we blind to it. We blind to it because nothing is just by accident. You think about when y'all sit, sit, sit and, 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 take, and take, you got to. Uh, when when we when you sit there and you do the 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 little selfies and stuff like that, I've watched y'all take fifty five pictures of the same pose just to make sure you get the right look so you can post it. And you don't think people who are spending millions of dollars on a brand are sitting there making sure that they got their uh, T's crossed and their I's dotted before they sit there and put it out to the public? No. Listen. Sunday, those of you that was in church and, and, and uh, Siobhan had a standing uh, a certain way. She's like, everybody got to stand like this. And Isaiah and Jessica took about 50 million pictures of the same pose. And Sister Siobhan's like, send me those pictures. And I'm like, it's the same thing. No, some of them are different. But that's, that's what we do, right? When we like stuff like that, <laughs> you know, we going to make sure that it's done right. You know, I love you, sis. I'm telling the truth, but we going to make sure it's done right. And so she's a perfectionist where that was concerned because that was her day and her and her her uh, daughter's day. Right. So she wanted to make sure that it was done right. Nothing wrong with that. But in the same breath. Right. These artists are not just doing stuff by accident. It's not by accident. It is propaganda. It is to sell a message. And it's to make sure that people go and drink their Kool-Aid. They know what it's going to do because they get they get a filter and a, and a feed of how many people respond to it. Go ahead, Pastor. Tierra uh, can help me out on this one. Uh, Tierra, remember we was in the living room and um and that that choir was in a circle, and I said, you know, I ain't never seen this before. And you explained to me that it was a, a secular song that Kanye West had put, um, quote unquote, spiritual. Yes, he put gospel, gospel lyrics to the to the uh, same melody. Uh, it's a of a rap song. And see now, I, I I sat there and I saw this, but my spirit wasn't connecting. I said, "Well, what is this?" Until Tierra told me that he took word, it's, it's a secular song and he, and he took words to it. And what's the name of the, what's the name of the secular song, Tierra? Um, the song is called Balling. <laughs> okay. See now, many of you probably know about this song. This went over my head, but I'm just saying, the message he was sending, I was not connecting with because I told, I said, I ain't never seen no, no choir like this. Never, never. But this is where you got to be. I mean, why is a serpent? You got to find out what's. I mean, what's what's the background behind this? But I, I'm saying this. I could not connect with it spiritually. And then when Tierra spoke to me, I said, "No wonder I was sitting there looking at this." I said, well, "They're all in a circle, rocking." You know, to, like I was like, "But I ain't never seen no choir like this." So the message that he was sending, it was probably to those who recognized the melody, but he put words to it that were supposed to be spiritual. So I just there, there are a lot of things going on in front of us. We don't even know what's going on. And we're going about it like it's, and I'm not saying it's okay, but I'm just saying it's not connecting to us spiritually. And we got to be aware of a lot of this stuff that's going on. And I'm not calling out names, but there are a lot of gospel 
people out there that's portraying this very same thing. But this one, this one thing, I'm glad Sister Tierra, <laughs> she helped me out because I didn't know what was going on. So I'm 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 being more aware of what's going on in these last and evil days. Like you said, Minister Howard, perilous in the last days, perilous times or things shall come. Amen. Um, next slide. All right. So y'all know who this is. Um, so, huh. yeah. So uh, it's so much I could say. It's so much I can say. Um, and I'm just... Um, So so let's go look. So so first of all, this right here uh said a lot. Um, you know, you had um, you know, he's an open, openly gay rapper. Um, and if you look, certain symbols are not by accident. Um, it looks like to a degree he's being taken from behind by Satan. Um uh let me go back to the slide before. I don't know if y'all got a chance to look at that. And the quote unquote dark angel, um, phallic symbols, like I said, uh, it, it's a lot. And basically, I'm going to be an angel for for the devil. I mean, again, y'all want to sit there and keep sitting there saying that this stuff, like, again, you get you get millions of dollars to shoot videos and there's a director and somebody thinks about it and the artists have say in what they want and what they don't want. Um, how they visualize it. And the fact that this is what you visualize of being a quote unquote dark angel, um, there's a there's a problem with that. I mean, next one. Um, and so again, we look at the Satan shoes, right? I don't know if y'all heard about this. And I had a problem with Nike. I know one thing I've always loved about Nike, Nike gets freedom for everything, and I love it. But it's certain things that, you know, um, you know. I think you got to draw the line somewhere when it comes to a representation. So the Satan shoes that, again, he so uh, passionately decided to put forward was it was featured Nike Swish logo and a bronze pentagram, right? Shape charm. Luke 10 and 18 is a reference to the biblical passage. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. A total of 666 pairs of the Satan shoes were produced, right? They will produce 666 pairs of these shoes. So you're, again, you're telling me this is by accident? Wake up, people, uh, which in quarter drops. Listen to this. This was so bizarre to me. And so with the 666 pairs of the Satan shoes that were produced, right, it was incorporated, which, which incorporated drops of its employees' blood and ink into an air bubble of the Nike Air max 97 sneakers so i want you to just think about this right 666 people decided and maybe it wasn't that many but still let's just say for argument's sake that each person had a pair of sneakers that they were giving their blood to 666 people decided that that's what they were going to do and they thought that's what was up they thought that's what's up and each pair costs 1018 dollars check this out though they sold out in less than a minute last month 1018 that somebody sat there and thought that it was okay and again if you look at the sneaker those of you that didn't catch why i read luke 10 18 because that's what the scripture says on the sneaker right by the swoosh it says i saw satan fall like lightning from heaven and these are sneakers that are being produced. And on the top of the tongue, you see a pentagram. And that sells out in less than a minute last month for $1,018. So the company MSCHF was sued by Nike over the unauthorized sale of the shoes. The company offered refunds to people who wanted to return the sneakers under the terms of the settlement 
according to Nike, which said in the statement that the purpose of the voluntary recall was to remove the shoes from circulation. But again, Isaiah, this is what the Bible says. It's not that this is what's going to happen. These last days, these perilous days, this is what's going to happen. Jordans can cost up to about $200 some dollars, right? But Jokers is buying stuff for $1,018. And it's sold out in less than a minute. What is that telling you about the world we live in? Next. So Mark 3 and 24 says, if a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. So I use that for a reason. All right, let's go. So comic characters, it's going to tap more into a lot of uh, my, 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 my males, but overall, everybody, because there's things that we celebrate and we don't even realize it. All right. Um, so Damon Hellstrom, right? This is a comic. He is the son of Satan, right? He's the son of Satan. And so he sits there and gets his powers from, from hell. But to make it acceptable, he quote unquote fights against the evil. So the second most powerful a demonic hero to exist is the son of the devil himself. So you're going to see his sister that I'm going to bring up in a in a, in a minute, but Damon was raised by servants after his mother lost her sanity upon hearing her children's and husband's true nature because his mother was married to the devil. He grew up to become one of the most powerful magic users and demonic heroes of this world. Do you hear that? Demonic heroes using his power. Yes, and we're getting it, spawners in there. Using his power and knowledge, he had battled not only demonic villains but his own father's forces as well as to work with other Marvel heroes during the time of great demonic invasion of the earth. So see, that's supposed to make him look, you know, good to us, right? This is his sister, right? So Satana, she accepted her nature. She was just basically like, now mind you, these is comic books that's out there that, the, that any of our kids can just buy and get off the rack, right? So Satana is... The demonic one, she's accepted her true nature. Unlike her brother, she embraced her demonic heritage and was raised and trained in the dark arts by her father. Y'all familiar with John Constantine, right? And so Constantine, what does he have? Constantine has powers to the underworld. Let's listen to that. The underworld. So in him having powers to the underworld, People, uh, they made a movie, I think it was, uh, um, was either Keanu Reeves or, yeah, it was Keanu Reeves, but he's a fictional character who basically, he's a quote unquote considered a hero. And he has the power to be able to conjure up his intellectual is a genius. He basically sold his soul and he has knowledge of the occult because that's where his powers come from. But again, these are heroes. So the blue devil, and I know I put, I put them, some of these in order from least to most, some of them that you will know, because I'm getting to some of them and the ones that you might not know, but I used to be a big comic head and some of these things, right, are, are things that, you know, a lot of us uh, just pass by. And the reason why it's important, because these are things sometimes like that we, allow our kids to watch case in point the justice league right and so justice league unlimited blue devil was part of that he was part of the group right and so we're like oh they're watching superman and this that and the other is cool and so kid the, the the blue devil's mentor and and idol right uh he was born when a stuntman led him building a suit that gave him the blue devil look a demon escaped its confines at the same time and mis mistook Daniel as a demon itself and used magic to drain Daniel of his demonic powers. Yet since then, Daniel wasn't a demon. The magic instead bonded to him to the blue devil suit. And later he wound up becoming an actual demon. <laughs> Somebody thought of this. So y'all know Spawn and Isaiah, you asked about that. So one unique hero has become a, de a demonic being known as Hellspawn 
is the one and only anti-hero spawn. Born Albert Simmons spawn was a Marine. So again, we again, you know, military, he was a Marine turned secret service agent and later a CIA operative becoming an assassin for the CIA. He loses his life after being set up by his best friend and a director of the CIA. And he's sent to hell making a deal to become a demonic agent on earth in order to see his wife again. So he returns to earth in demonic form and becomes an anti-hero who destroys evil in brutal fashion. Etrogen the demon. Etrogen the demon, uh, again, part of the Justice League, one of the more powerful demonic heroes in the world of DC Comics is the one and only one they call Etrogen. Etrogen is the half brother of the ancient wizard Merlin and the son of the demon Belial. After being unable to gain Etrogen's secrets, Merlin bonded his half brother to the Camelot Knight, Jason Blood, making him immortal. In a modern era, Jason works as a demonologist in Gotham City and calls upon the power of Etrogen in a dire subcircum. Not call upon the power of Jesus, but call upon the power of the demon Etrogen in dire circumstances, having a graded relationship with the demon house inside of him. Woo. Now, I know y'all familiar with this. We saw the movie and we cheered it on, right? And so Johnny Blaze, Method Man used to call himself Johnny Blaze for other reasons, though. Um, one of the most powerful and original demon heroes in the Marvel Universe is known as Johnny Blaze, a.k.a. Ghost Rider. Johnny was a stunt driver and made a deal with the demon Mephisto to save the life of someone close to him, later becoming the demonic hero, Ghost Rider, transforming his mo motorcycle into a demonic hell spawn of a ride. He uses his pen and stare to take on demonic and human villains alike and has worked alongside with other heroes of the Marvel Universe on several occasions, most recently taking over Mephisto's realm himself. And so those of you that, again, follow comics, right? Y'all familiar with Raven. And Raven is part of the Teen Titans, right? And those of you that have followed it, because it was a show on HBO too, right? Um, even when they changed it from a cartoon to a, to a um, series. And Raven is the son, the daughter of the devil. The most powerful demonic hero to date is the daughter of DC Comics' very own Trigon, which is basically the devil, and Raven. Raven's father is a demonic entity from another dimension who seeks to dominate all worlds. Born to be a gateway to bring Trigon in the world, Raven ran away from her past to escape her doomed future, becoming a teen titan. Raven grew powerful enough to house her father's power and being inside a crystal on her forehead, which was called her third eye. She is also able to separate her soul self from her body and utilize powerful magic. Hellboy, right? And Hellboy, we saw the movie, um, was known as demonic heroes in existence of none other than Hellboy. The Dark Horse comic is a type of creature known as Cambion or half human, half demon being. And upon his brow was set a crown of flame Hellboy was summoned to Earth by the Third Reich, a.k.a. the Nazi Party. Batman, this is the last one I have. And why do I have him, right? Because, again, certain things that we call, quote, unquote, heroes, like I said, we don't think about stuff. It's not accident that he's called the, what? The Dark Knight. His costume has horns, right? And on top of that, he is wanted by police because why? Even though the police work with him sometimes because he seeks vengeance, right? He's a vigilante, right? Not of God at all, but these are things that we all call heroes, all right? So before I hit play on this, I'm going to end Bible study with this um, before... Uh, I said this to y'all last week, and why is it important to know the word? Y'all seen me play this brother last week, and I follow a lot of his stuff. Um, in his comment, he's going to break down something, again, Kirk Franklin said. 
Um, Pastor alluded to it, and we covered it last week, that we put our, what's the name, into our faith into man. And because somebody's singing gospel music, that means that they must be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Not so. As we read, when we read, he came and set the captives free. What was the one thing Rebecca said? She was going and she was teaching Bible study because if she can get inside the church, right? If she can get behind enemy lines, then she can bring souls with her. And so we have to be careful. Um, one of my relatives and I had a conversation about this and, you know, like we were talking and it was like, well, you know, he didn't mean it. No, he didn't mean it. Because again, when you are brought up in a church and you've been around quote unquote Christianity for years, you do understand. We talked about um, in the entertainment business, bafflement. And there's certain things that I have been approached with. People I know have been approached with that you um, have, this is what you worship, so to speak, in order to quote unquote, get more clout in an entertainment business. Um, the Bible talks about the Lamb of God. The Bible talks about, right, uh, uh, the Lion of Judah. Um, and it also talks about the goat in Revelations. The goat, and by no means, is the greatest of all time when we are referring to biblical sense. Because, again, it wouldn't make sense that you are making reference, what he's about to say, to when you say the lion and the lamb shall bow down to the goat, it doesn't make sense if you already mentioned the lamb to say the lamb will bow down to the greatest of all time, Jesus. It's a contradiction, it doesn't even make sense. But again, when you know symbolization and certain things that things stand for, we have to be very mindful um, um, what we say and what we do. Go, go ahead, let me play this. All gospel artists. He said at the 2022 BET Awards that the lion and the lamb shall bow down to the goat in a freestyle rap. Watch this. I was a dirty kiss, now me and God in sync, like Big and Jay and Oz, the greatest gay goat. The lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. The lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. Kirk Franklin said the lion and the lamb shall bow down to the goat. It's no way. This can slip out of your mouth. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. What's in a person comes out of a person. And I noticed over the years, Kurt Franklin been compromising. Recently, he made a song with Lil Baby, a gangster rapper who is well known for promoting violence, drugs, and degrading women. And Kurt Franklin on the stage with him, performing. Now, I understand if he's preaching the gospel to him, because that's exactly what we're supposed to do. But there's nowhere in the Bible where God sent these leaders to go and sing and entertain the world with their little G gods. The Bible said, come out from among them and be ye separate, say ye the Lord. I'm going to give you scriptures because I want you to understand what's going on. John chapter 1 and verse 29. The next day, John See of Jesus coming unto him and say, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Notice here, Jesus is the Lamb of God. Let's keep reading. Revelation chapter five in verse five. And one of the elders saith unto me, weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, have prevailed to open the book and loose the seven seals thereof. I want you to notice in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 5, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. So since we cleared who the lion and the lamb is, let me show you who the goat is. Take a look at this. This is the goat-headed image of Baphomet. This statue represents Lucifer and his followers. So how in the world you get this mixed up? Where Jesus is bowing to the goat? Y'all better pay attention, watch and pray because God is exposing. Don't let nobody deceive you. The word is already settled in heaven. The goat is Lucifer and Lucifer is defeated by the blood of the lamb. And I heard some people say it. 
He was calling Jesus the GOAT, the greatest of all time. That's earthly. That's worldly. You never attach GOAT to the name of Jesus because the GOAT is a symbol of Lucifer. The world celebrates what he just said because they understand who the GOAT is and what the GOAT represents. You don't have to judge a person's heart. Their words are going to reveal what's in their heart. Because words is the fruit of the heart. It's the evidence of what's in a person's heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. All you have to do is pay attention to what they're saying. You will know the tree by the fruit it bears. You think they're going to invite a real man of God at the BET Awards? Somebody who's going to preach repentance and call out their abominations. They're not going to invite him to come and speak. They're going to get a lukewarm Christian that compromise and act just like them to put on a show at their degrading event. The devil is alive. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Okay. So, any um any questions? Um, yeah, I saw that Ty Triple was on Wild and Out episode, and one of the skits was them rapping at the last supper table. And again, I I don't have a problem. Like some people do, they like oh you know rapping, and I I don't have a problem with that. I I judge you by what you say, your content, and certain things that's coming out your mouth. Um, but again, that is it for me. Um, I want to thank everybody for being on here. I'm going to turn it over to uh, the shepherd of the house and uh, first lady, and then we will dismiss. dismiss with anybody, have, anybody have any questions? Anybody have anything they want to say? Anything they want to ask? Um, those of you, I have three copies left of he came and set the captives free and I have two copies of divine revelation of hell. So if anybody doesn't have that book and they wanted an extra book, um, you know, for someone, let me know, please. And I will get it to you. Thank you. And God bless. Oh, Lady Carlos, you want to go first? Oh, all right. I just want to, um, Make mention. I'm sorry, I'm still trying to deal with the grandkids. Sorry about that. Um, I, I'm sorry, but I didn't get a chance to hear a lot of it trying to deal with them. So y'all forgive me. Y'all okay, have, have a blessed night. Have a blessed night, okay? And I'll talk to you all later. All right. All right. I I just want to add a little bit to uh, to what was said. Um, there are a lot of things like I, like I'm saying in my generation. It was sacrilegious to blend a lot of things, but it was, this is not new. Subliminal messages has been going on for years, but there are a lot of things that will go over our heads because of our ignorance. The Bible does speak and it says very plainly, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. It's not that it's not there. It is not, it's we're not seeking and asking the Lord to open our eyes in a lot of things so we won't be ignorant or we'll embrace it thinking that it is it is uh, the spiritual things of God. Um, Minister Howard spoke about this, the dollar. There are a lot of symbolism on this dollar and we're, we're not even aware of what's going on or what's on the dollar, but we handle it and not knowing what's going on. So I'm, I'm praying that what, for the last two weeks, we've been talking about these things, but there's a whole lot more that's going on and we should be aware of certain things. Prayerfully that just these two weeks, maybe we might do it, we might extend it for another week for those who have questions. Uh, Isaiah and all those that are on here that were giving us a little feedback. Um, my kids, when I found out about Snapple, I refused to buy it. But then again, I think Minister Howard, if you remember what I said to last week about uh, Procter and Gamble, uh, they're so big 
you're going to buy something from them in supporting their uh, beliefs. So, and then, you know, this is where we got to say, Lord, I thank you. And I give God the praise. I appreciate this time because this is where I'm getting uh, some knowledge and understanding about what's happening in these last and evil days. So what we need to do is be more conscious and ask the Lord to open our eyes so we can help not only ourselves, that we can help somebody else. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Okay, Minister Howard. No, Pastor, that was it. I was just going to let you dismiss with prayer, but I, I did put it up here. If anyone wants a cop, I mean, um, copy of a Bible study, we do record it. Um, anybody wants a copy of the past two weeks when we were discovering, um, discussing, excuse me, excuse me, satanic and subliminal messages, um, please reach out to me. Um, I will make sure that you get a copy of the recording. Amen. There was also a, a, a young lady wanted to know about K-pop. If we get, uh, I don't know, we have to do some homework on that one. Uh, what does it mean? I'm, fam I'm familiar. That's, okay. that's going to be a longer discussion. Okay. So maybe we can bring that up next week to, you know, get at least a understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, then, you know, we'll see which way the Lord leads us because let, let's put it this way. Um, we don't want to get to a place that we get pushed in a corner or we get in a position where we compromise so much that we don't know what's going on. So... Pastor, you good? Okay, I, I, I thought I got booted off. But we thank God for what we have heard. And we want to continue on in the direction, whereas even though we might think in uh, how God is delivering us, we should be able to help somebody else not knowing what's going on. Because like you said, and I thank God for how you're saying it, but I, I really ask the Lord to let us be aware of if it was up to Satan, he would have us all convinced that he don't exist. And all these worldly goods, it's not good for us. And then there are some things that will come across our minds that we need to start thinking about, Lord, what is going on? But I'm praying in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm praying that all hearts and minds are clear. And we're going to lift up the name of Jesus from this day forward. I'm going to dismiss. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for how you blessed us, oh God, to be more aware of what's going on around us. We ask you, oh God, to bless us, oh God, to be observant of our children and what they're watching and what they're doing and why they are reacting certain ways, oh God. We want you to keep us covered with your blood. Lord, reveal the things to us that we're able to accept, oh God, that we're able to go forward. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you right now. Many of us, oh God, are not aware of what's going on around us, but make it aware, oh God, that we're able to attend and adapt and apply. And then we are able to give it to somebody else to help them along the way. We praise you, oh God, as we depart from this place, but never from thy presence. And we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen and amen. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you or we'll see you or hear from you on Sunday in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Keith, I got you. Good night, Amen. everyone. This is mine. Good night. Thank you, Mr.